Okay, guys, welcome to a new episode of Creative in Focus. My name is Vince. I'll be the host of today's show. And today, guys, we have a very, very special guest. And if you guys been um, active in Instagram or have been active uh, in my Instagram if you're following me, you will definitely see this guy uh, like be, been there and here. Uh, if you, he's been like a very fa- famous fashion photographer. Now he's been uh, doing a lot of uh, street photography, right? Also. Yeah, street photography. And he's been doing some live shows. Uh, in Instagram, in Facebook, uh, if you guys been watching that as well, and moderating, yeah, moderate can we can, we can say moderating one of the uh, quite famous uh, Instagram page which is called Ideas Malaysia, and he want to be very very humble for today's uh, podcast lah. <laughs> so let me introduce guys to the our guest of this show is John John L M C. Hi hi. Hi <laughs> so John, how are you doing today? Good. Good. Okay. So uh, you know, uh, I always like when I editing, right? I always put like a clap yeah. sound effect. But yeah. right now when we're shooting, right? There's no <laughs> no clap. There's no sound effects here, la, So we just have to pretend there's a clap, la, After I print, uh, like oh, okay. showcase the guest. <laughs> <laughs> so John, um, okay. so uh, I'm just gonna cover the first mm-hmm. topic of this podcast, la. Um, is how's our life after um RMCO or post RMCO, la. Okay. Because uh, RMCO just lifted like two to three, two yeah. to three weeks ago, right? Okay. Yeah. So I just want in this podcast, I just want to discuss about how's our creative lives, mm. our business, and our personal life. Huh? Mm. Okay. So yeah. So before we get into that topic, right? Yep. What's new? Uh, what do you mean? What's new? <laughs> what's What's new? What's happening right now? What's happening with you right now? Uh, Any interesting things that been happening? No, still, still doing the 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 same things all okay. over. Okay. You know, still. Uh, I think. Right now, I am shooting more on uh, analog camera. Analog, okay, okay, yeah. yeah I've been yeah, seeing your yeah. stories. So every week, me and my friend almost like uh, we are going out every week, okay. just to shoot one row of films. So how many how many films you can, I mean how, how many shots you can get for one film? Thirty six. Around thirty six. Yeah. So if you can push it, sometimes you can uh, do about thirty eight shots. Yeah, okay. per row. Okay. So you'll be doing that for how long? Uh, I am. Because I, I try to understand my own analog camera, so okay. the, the first two I didn't count. So right now I just finished my second row. Okay. So I'm testing another camera, so it will be third row. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So basically, just going out, um, shooting anything. Is it random or you have a certain theme or uh, topic? Just shooting like how I, uh, like how I did with my mobile Digital. mobile graphic. Oh, mobile graphic. Yeah. So. So you just walk around and see anything interesting, then you shoot on. Because shooting analog camera is a little bit different. Okay. okay. Yeah, because like mobile graphy, you, you have you have yeah. do the photo walk, <laughs> we can shoot anything. But yeah. when it comes to analog camera, you really need have to, to really like pick the stop and pick the moment, mm-hmm. then only you shoot. Okay. So and you can't do really like burst photography, so no worry. So this one analog, you have to really uh, see, access the the. The, sit, the surroundings, the surroundings yeah, the situation. Yeah. Then you have to figure out your, all your exposure, you know, whether it's correct or not. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, I think that's like the old days of yes, photography. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think so you appreciate more. Actually. Yeah, because I, I never used analog before. I never mm. shot film yeah, photography before. So yeah. having the luxury of shooting countless pictures, adjusting mm. everything in post. It's very interesting, actually, yeah. because you, uh, you learn more, actually. Oh, is it? So, so like, even though I, I know the theory of all this exposure triangle, mm-hmm. but when you are shooting with analog camera, it's, so it's like back to basics again. Okay. So it's good, la. it's good to, to train all your, what you see, how you're going to compose your pictures, your exposures and everything. And then furthermore, my analog camera don't have uh, metering, don't have light okay. metering. Oh, then how? So everything is just... Play by uh, eyes. So we, so I use the uh, Sunny 16 rules. Okay. So Sunny 16 rules. What, what, what is it? Can you uh, explain to me that? Uh, they, they have a formula la, for okay. if you don't have a light meter. So even though I can use my mobile and, and you know, uh, use the, the app okay. to, to check the lights, but, but when you're using the Sunny 16 rules, it's actually quite simple. La. So after you practice, once you know the formula, you keep practicing it, you, you sort of like get a hang of it. And it's quite nice. La. So, so far, my, the two rows of films, uh, re- the recent one, 36, or, the, the 36 shots got no spoil. No okay. spoil shots. <laughs> okay. So, so it's, That's it's good. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
So you've been like quite busy with your analogs lah. <laughs> analogs and then right now uh, into some new hobbies. I just bought the uh, the Vinyl record player. So if you guys like watching from the videos, right? What's behind the camera <laughs> is quite different from what is what we're showing at the moment, lah. So he did like uh, quite a big changes to his studio the the last time I came here. Yeah. Uh, I believe was during our coffee yes, shot, yeah. So yeah. All right. So let's get into the topic for today. Mm, okay. So how is uh, post RMCO? Let's let's uh, go for business first, then we get to the first post RMCO. Okay. Yep. Business, uh. Yeah. I mean, like, how how is it running? Is it like picking up very fast? Or like, is it very slow? Um, slow, of course. Everyone would be saying the same thing. It's slow, yep. uh, but I we still haven't really, really uh, feeling the effect yet. So, me and some friends we are looking at probably August or September to mm -hmm. see the real effect in the in the industry. So see effect as as it mean effects like what? Whether it's going to be even worse than now. Or okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I think by the time this podcast comes out, it's like August, second week of August, I guess. Yeah. So, so in terms of uh, the pandemic, it's not really over yet. Yep. So that's true. But you know, some most Malaysian things that is over. Uh, not really, lah. I mean, they 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 still aware of it, but yep. uh, we we still don't have our second wave yet. So, so we are looking. Lah. Okay. Yeah, we're looking at it, see, see whether there's uh, any second wave coming or not. Okay. Yeah. So, like, if, let's say you're waiting for it. Like, what, what's your plan if, let's say, the thing... Survival mode now? I think. I mean, right now, everyone is in the survival mode. Yeah, now, but correct, correct. If, let's say, it becomes, okay, let's say, second wave, what's the plan you have? Or you have at the moment? Is that like, a, a, are you diversifying any incomes or finding other solution because uh, I know a photographer he become a grab driver just to mm. sustain himself mm. so is that a part of your plan as well? Um, not until that stage yet but mm -hmm. uh, if really it comes to that moment then, then we shall see mm. yeah so right now you, uh, I'm just planning like six months ahead lah, so what, okay. what I should be doing and all mm -hmm. so but at the moment also like uh, because of, of this pandemic every, and business are uh, uh, getting back already, but it's the pricing, you know. Yeah. Also the client side, you know. Yeah, I mean, that that one uh, I can share later. Uh, mm, like my correct. pricing experience, lah. But from your experience, like okay, let's say post MCO, mm. right? I mean RMCO. Mm. What is the worst offer you got, like the pricing wise? Let Let's talk about photography first, lah, because I know you do videography as well, right? Not to say worst offer, lah, but just that the any, lowest, lah, lowest. Any quotation you put, lah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't get la. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Well, whatever, uh, I, I feel that, okay, this is my, my uh, limit, mm -hmm. the lowest limit, mm -hmm. but still got people lower than that. So it's like, oh my God. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that means uh, every time you send a quotation, 90% or one so, out of 10? So yeah, you have to sometimes uh, just have to buy your tongue. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and suck it and, up. Yeah, see see how it goes, lah. Because we 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 know what's our worth, yep. so we also do not want to like spoil the market price, right? Just yep. just by charging everything cheap, cheap, yep. you know. But also, hopefully, the clients will understand we are in the production side, so yep. nothing really comes cheap, lah. I mean, it yep. comes with experience and True. all, you know, you know. So that's our expertise. Mm. So if you just charge cheap and all that, now it's going to be yeah. we are spoiling the market. Yeah. So uh, yes, I mean speaking of spoiling the market, um, mm. you taught you taught me this like I think last year, right? Yeah, I, I, I well, I think very last I, year I ago. Teach you anything? <laughs> no, no, I mean, yeah, like, not taught me like, but he shared with me something okay. that yeah. about spoiling the market because I, I told him that I used to charge for this kind of amount yeah. for video, and then mm. you were saying <laughs> you explained to me why you should not do that because you're spoiling a lot of market. Mm, okay. Um, so I mean, like, if let's say this is a pre um, bad thing about charging low and spoiling the market. Mm -hmm. And why do you think some people are still like charging that high? Because they know what's their worth, man. Because uh -huh. the, the time that we has that we have spent on on learning mm -hmm. and experience, you know, and all yep. that. That one money cannot buy one. So, true, true. Yeah. So and also the, the time that we are gonna spend on editing and you know post production yeah. and stuff is that one also actually yeah. uh, taken a lot. That, that, that's like yeah. the I mean, we cannot say that to the clients, like, I mean, hey, They have know, to be educated. Yeah, they have to be educated. Actually, they know one, but they just looking fishing for like the cheapest 
correct, thing. Correct, yeah. correct. And then there's a, actually, um, have you checked out the, there's a YouTube channel called The Future? No. Okay, so basically, um, the last video I posted, I talked about this YouTube channel, which actually helped me about negotiating mm -hmm. and how to talk to a prospect or a client mm -hmm. on, if let's say, that's a cheap client. Mm -hmm. So um, his philosophy, the guy that runs The Future is called Chris Du. His philosophy is uh, when closing a sales, it's not just about getting the money, it's closing the sales. So closing a sales equals to like you solving the client's problem and with the best money or in that case, the budget possible. Mm. So, I mean, you always have like a minimum cap, right? I, I don't think uh, most of the people who are watching this, right? They don't have, okay, I only must work for 10,000 ringgit. Then only I do the job. If below than that, I won't do one. So do you have like this kind of minimum cap? Uh, or is it, is it just me only? There, there is la, there, there is some minimum cap la, because you you need to also like uh, calculate the expenses, the, the, yeah. the hours, yep. you know, the expenses like you say, you know, the, the transport, all all this comes into the calculations. La. So there there's always a minimum. Minimum. Yeah. Even like you have to plan like uh, how many hours I'm gonna shoot, you know, and then all this planning, creative. Mm -hmm. that, this, that's that's a bit... to, it's, it's not just shoot, you know. Yeah. Also, the creativity that, that comes out, all this plan. I mean, that's the difference between la. I mean, um, I just want to ask you, like, do you do photos a lot or videos a lot? Depends on projects. Okay. So, like, yeah, let's so. say, like, if let's say two of them, right, what is the highest cap cap capacity or the highest percentage you did? Uh, of course, photography more. Okay. Yeah. So, photography, like, like, for me, video, right, how do I calculate my minimum cap, right, is how much profit I want to earn from that. Uh, project la. so minimum I have like 20 to 30 percent profit I want it back to myself because mm -hmm. if let's say the project is 10,000 confirm you're not going to get the 10,000 because you're going to spend a little bit of money right so no, la, I mean you 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 know your worth yeah I mean like uh, of, of course based on your experience as well all right okay. and then on your expertise so how much you're going to charge your client and right. you need to let the client knows why you're charging this this price mm -hmm. law and what okay. is well are they getting lo? Right, and then what? Uh, maybe if you wanna add some added value service like mm -hmm. onto the price, like the extra stuff you gonna extra get. or whatever that the clients can get. That you know you need to let the client know. Mm. Okay, so that's how you do like pricing and everything. Correct. Correct. Mm, okay, so how's mm. your personal life? <laughs> you mean after the post? <laughs> after the post, like you've, no, been, I mean, you've uh, been stuck in this house for like God knows how many months. Uh, actually, I think it's, uh, it's a great experience. Okay. It, actually, it's not really I like, stuck in the house la, because <laughs> lunch and dinner, I still go out and, and you know, okay, tapau. La, tapau uh, so so yeah. you didn't cook in the house? You didn't do like da no, dalgona? I still, I still cook. I, <laughs> all I did, the TikTok I cook. challenges? I didn't do the TikTok challenges, <laughs> but, but I did cook. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's great. La. I mean, du during the, uh, the MCU, so the things that uh, like online stuff are really sped up. Okay. I mean, in, in terms of uh, people uh, accepting like online buying, you know, everything all sped up, you know. So, so there's a like three sixty change. Uh. So now, like coming up from the lockdown, are you still hooked with the? No, now coming up, not re the lockdown, mm -hmm. and because right now we are recovering stage, so it's it's different. So so we still need to see a few more months what's going to happen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you, you, you do live alone, right? Like, mm -hmm. you're not living with any family members at the mm -hmm. moment, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think the, the different shape of experience coming up from the lockdown is very different. Because for me, like, mm -hmm. imagine you cooked up in a, a small condo with four mm -hmm. people and two cats and one dog. Coming, like, living there for three months is, like, super unbearable. I was... No, yours is because... The police are right in front. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, it's really, and it's really a lockdown. So for my experience, right, uh, my house is actually located uh, nearby a police station. Mm -hmm. So if <laughs> even though I want to go out and buy some food, right, I always gonna ca caught one. So grab food and food panda was like very, like a blessing for me like, to get all the food. But most of the time, my mom would cook like, But yeah, like living in my personal life, like coming up from the. The whole thing, I was so, like really, I would say mentally, I was so relaxed because once everything got out and then my, my parents started working and my siblings started working back, going out already, mm. I feel like mentally like happy, you know, it's like, okay, I have the whole house to myself, mm. can I do anything? So I'm just like, 
Okay, I I don't want to go back to the lockdown phase again. Oh, no, my my is. <laughs> then I think I, my, nothing much really changes. Then then I come here live with you already lah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because here like lunch, I make sure my lunch and dinner I'm going out. Mm-hmm. At least just drive to somewhere. Tapa, come at least you're out. Okay. Yeah. And at least you did some activity. I have the Porsche outside. I I did my exercise indoor and outdoor. You know. Yeah. So I also I also saw like some. Video she shot from yeah. the phone, slow motion laugh, throwing the camera lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some some of those things. So okay. yeah, I mean, like, as long as you plan what you do yeah, at home, so yeah. Mm. Okay, cool, it's, cool, cool. It's okay. It's, it's a good experience. Ah, seeing people going online, doing selling, doing live shows. So have you have you went through any of these ah uh, online, ah, uh, should we call it course or live shows? Uh. Shows, uh, what kind of shows? Like webinars, lah. Let's say, uh, let's make it webinar. Webinars. Have you went to like? Because confirm during the three months our lockdown, oh, right? Yeah, correct, correct. There's a lot of like sales people, gurus, lah, selling this and that, lah. Have yeah, you joined anything? Yeah, I watched one or two after that. Uh, uh-huh. No, lah, because you you after after watching one or two, then it's like oh shit. At the end of the day, they're selling something. Okay. And then after you watch the whole two hours, like actually you didn't watch much because they're repeating. Okay. <laughs> that 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 is because true. because that is that is their sales strategy, man. Okay. Yeah. All right. So whatever they put in the title, actually you are not getting anything, man. Yeah, it's just something to capture you coming. All right. And then at the end, of the day, they sell something. No, their their end, uh, almost end of their program. Mm-hmm. Then they were like, oh, got got a free gift, you know. Uh, so have you bought? Have you bought anything? Because uh, I think I attended once last time. Okay. So, okay. so after you sign up. Right. Yeah. You attend that course. You need to sign up another one, which is cost even higher, and so. I mean, I mean that's the sales strategy, lah. Like yes, you yes. offer them something acceptable to muscle the community or whatever. Then upsell them, you know, more more package. Yeah. I mean, I've seen the right. so, whole strategy before, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of Malaysian gurus, they do this a lot, yeah. especially finance, digital marketing, uh, drop shipping. Yeah. So I don't like that. Yeah. So you say you joined one, right? What was that cost for? For, I think I think it's more on Airbnb uh, last time. Airbnb, mm. for hosting Airbnb or shooting Airbnb. Hosting, hosting. Hosting. Yeah. Oh, sorry, looking into Airbnb. Sort right? of lah, just just looking around, see okay. see what I can learn. So, yeah. we, did you stick through the whole seminar or just like the first seminar? Yes. So, oh, there's multiple seminars. But, yeah. I also thought there was there was only one. Uh, <laughs> there is one. So after you attended, then you know, hey, there's another master class. Like what? What the hell? <laughs> so how long was the first one? Two days. Wow. Yeah. Digitally, you joined two no, days. No, no. Oh, I you went. went, went. Yeah. Oh, you commit two days. Uh? So so now that you know, once you attended, then you have the experience. So now you know other courses are also almost the same now. This. <laughs> Yeah, you attend one, then yeah, then you are forced into signing another one, which is like they say you learn more. That's the business tactic, yeah. lor. What yeah. to do? Yeah. So. Okay. Cool. So then you can use those tactics for your for yourself. Ah, that one, that one, <laughs> we cannot talk in this video, lah. That one later, later after this video, we gotta talk about something else, lah. Like okay. So um, I'm speaking of like earlier on, like about the mm. pricing thing, right? So I just want to share a, a little bit of experience of how um after the RMCO. I encountered like this group of clients, mm. um, because my initial I would just say like my initial pricing for a video of uh, I do real estate videos, so it was capped about three to four k one. Mm. So I understand once I come out from the post lockdown, right? There's a not a lot of people spending a lot of money, especially for real estate agent lah, because you know real estate agent they don't make that much, mm. or those who make that much is like cut from the marketing fee yeah. lah. Yeah. This and this. So I lowered the okay. How if let's say you're gonna charge a video for four thousand, that's your maximum. What's the lowest you can go? If let's say you are doing that video. Uh, firstly, you you don't talk about the price first, lah. Okay. I mean, like you, if you want to cut down or um, let's say you want to work towards their budget, or maybe you un- you try to understand what's their budget, lah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. With their budget, then what can you offer? Mm-hmm. That that's the best way to do it, lah. Okay. So uh, so let's say for example. Instead of multiple location, then you say, okay, with this budget, I can only shoot one mm. or two locations. Yeah. So usually, like, uh, real estate, right? It's mm. just one location. Mm. So how do I package my stuff? Is, uh, there's a saying, lah. Do not ever do packaging one. 
for videography or photography never I, i mean photography i cannot speak for photography because i haven't done any like big photo okay. projects but videography right uh, what i learned from my mentors and there's a saying as well do not package a video production work lah because you never know how much you want to spend only package it if you are 100% confirm how much you're going to be spending and how much money why, you're going to make it back why do you why don't you know how much you are spending because here's the thing so when i started out doing uh, real estate videos right i i charge i charge about 300 ringgit for one property okay okay so every time i make mm. I, let's say the revenue is 300 right mm. the profit i make is about less than 100 so i didn't consider the cost of renting equipment because uh, i would say that i don't have all the equipment no lah you the most important point is that you have a list lah what what you have mm-hmm. how much you're spending so this is your cut off cut off price lah yeah that, that's why that's uh-huh. how i do it lah uh-huh. so usually if let's say i want to charge something so i have a percent this is my, I, i don't think this one got a lot of people do this but this is my own preference i need a profit of 20 to 30% from a certain project So uh, the calculation part is quite. Uh, I was also very confused like how I did in the Excel sheet, but that's the percentage low. So if let's say I'm gonna be getting 20 to 30 percent profit, I need to charge a prop uh, appropriately and then the expenses. So compared to last time and right now, mm. I have a crew to to do the shooting lah. And then also I understand different properties have different values. And then let's say the property is like a villa. Mm. A very bungalow villa. Do you charge five hundred to shoot that video? No, I think other people. I'm I'm not a marketing guru, okay. so I mean, uh, I'm sure there are other uh, uh, agencies mm-hmm. or production or marketing people. Yep. They they will charge by giving options. Yep. To clients. Okay. Yep. Package A, package B, package C. Yep. So that's the easiest to work with, lor. And then at least your client they know what they're expecting. Yeah. I mean, okay, that that one is very really arguable for me lah because mm. I been I did that before. Like mm. whatever you're saying, right? I did it way before yeah. when I because I've been like in this industry for three years. You know, yeah. I've been doing this. What I understand is right. Most of the times, right, real estate agent they are either fishing for prices or mm. they don't know what they want. Also, they they don't understand what is the. I mean, last time now they really understand what is the drone lah, what's the shot mm. lah, this lah because it's quite. Uh, standard really no yeah. more like video is like the most yeah. okay. luxurious thing lah. So last time when I did it like packaging right, I mm. did like three package. Like have you have you do you know the three box strategy? No. Nope. <laughs> okay, it's like McDonald's lah, medium, small, and yeah. large. Okay. So I use that strategy, mm. and most of the times they always go for the cheaper one, and then cheaper one okay lah. I'm okay with it because I'm doing less work, but I'm also not undervaluing myself. But the problem with that is right. They always either have two answers for me. One is that, hmm, can combine this with this and then give me a best price. That's one. Second thing is like, hmm, how are three also very? You have any other options? Ah, so what I understand, right? Once you give a lot of options to your clients, right, it's very hard for them to decide on one uh, package, lah. For me, that's what I encountered okay. before. Okay, because I I don't come from marketing background, so. Okay. Yeah, so marketing not so good. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the day I, I read something. Okay. You have a cheaper one, expensive more expensive one, one and then middle. People always sell the middle one. Of course, that that's the three yeah. box strategy. Yeah. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah. So, so there's a way to to sell that. Uh, mm-hmm. So I I forgot. Need need to. to what, yeah, I think I I if I if I search the video right, I'll put in the. Link somewhere will popping yeah, up some correct, video, correct. but yeah, there is a strategy about that. And true be though, I, I don't know if if you guys tried it before. Just go ahead, just tell me how yeah. to do it, because but, I've been through that problem, yeah. right? A lot of problem. And once I started not to give any options, rather than you know what, uh, I usually I listen to them, what they want. Otherwise, you give two options, so two options. Yeah. Okay. A or B. That's it. Cheaper or higher lah. Okay. Middle, middle or higher. Okay, and then after three more months later, then we do another podcast. Lah, then <laughs> talk about this. Lah. Because I'm I'm really looking into like how do I actually package it? Because uh, have you heard of the funnel system? Like, okay, this is the first phase they need to go through, second phase, and then third third. Have you have you heard of that? Before? I'm not like again. I'm not a marketing person, okay. so I always feel that it's a connection. Lah. Yeah. 
people buy from you is not because of your package. People buy from you because of you. Yep, that's true. Yeah. That's why uh, you know yeah. starting to do a lot of branding ready for my face. Correct, correct. They need to so, know who am I. So the service that you offer, they feel comfortable, they will take on. Mm -hmm. It's not because you're charging cheap. Okay. Okay. If you're charging cheap, I'm not confident as well. Yeah. You know, why are you charging so cheap? And don't touch the mic. <laughs> oh, okay. why, are you, why are you charging so cheap? You know? mm. Is it that you have no experience or? Yeah. So that means, like I said, like you, you need to know your worth. So yep. you're trying, this is your minimum already. So you have to convince them why you should take this law. Mm, okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll listen to this guy because he's more experienced uh, than me. He done a lot of jobs. But yeah, I will give it a try. Then after, I think after three months, we do another podcast, just an update podcast. Mm. So whatever I, whatever we <laughs> just learned today, right? I will do execute it after this date. Yeah. Because tomorrow, right now we're shooting in Sunday. La, so tomorrow is like the work day start already. Like, like we say, now it's a survival mode. So it's different already. Yep. Because, uh, you know, client side also, they have budget problems and stuff. So now yep. you need to try to work, work something out. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Okay, I'll give it a try. Like, give one or two, uh, A and B. Mm. A and B, okay? I'll, okay, yeah. this is like a... Like you say, I mean, like too much options is no good also. Yep. And then, you know, it's, it's not market, ma, you know. So, let them choose la, A or B, that's it. Okay. Okay. So, you guys listen to his strategy. La, okay. Hopefully, it works. <laughs> Hopefully, okay, let, okay. If I can give it a try, because John said it, if, if it works, okay, mm. if it works, Hopefully you, it works. you guys need to follow as well. Because let's make it a cap. La. Now, it's 26th of June. Then, another three, three months later, we meet up again on the same 26th. Yeah. Num num, yeah, we see it works or not. Because yeah, I mean, like, this is the struggle at the moment like, for me business-wise, mm. post RMCO, because uh, that, you have to understand there are not a lot of people willing to spend that much of money. Mm. And everybody is going through survival mode. Even the big, big companies also, mm. yeah, going through a lot of survival mode. Like. Even I got offer from a big company, uh, developer, like, <laughs> the, their only marketing budget is about like 2,000. But I need to shoot the whole developer. With the drone footage, la, this, la, that, la. Then you let them know how, how many scenes, how long is the video. Five yeah. minutes. Huh? Five minutes. I'm still, I'm still in talks with them. Actually, why five minutes? You have you to let the client know yeah. why, why are you suggesting to shoot five minutes video. Okay. Why, why it's not a, a good choice to have a five minutes video. Mm. You know, and, and what's their video going to use for? It means basically educate them a bit. La. Correct. Right? Okay. Doesn't mean, oh, I went longer is better. People get bored watching five minutes. <laughs> okay. Flying. Okay, that, flying that's in. true. That's true. La. <laughs> five minutes for a marketing video, uh, I mean, those, you have to no, like, if, tell if, them. If also. they use internally, then it's different. So, mm -hmm. so then you have to, to know, let's like, say, okay, drone footage, how many footage, then you can, you can offer, okay, I can only use one or two footage only from drone. Mm. That's it. Okay, cool. You know? Wow. I learned, I learned. Correct. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm like, this is like more like a coaching session <laughs> than a podcast, you know, because I'm learning a lot. Okay, I'll uh, I tell you this, I'll do all of this later on yeah. if I confirm the developer client because my drone pilot is sitting in front of me. <laughs> la. <laughs> so we, we have another drone project coming next month. Mm. You know the Monkeara oh, project. Yeah, 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 yeah. Monkeara. So yeah, if that works, I mean, more job yeah. for you Some, as well. Sometimes la. maybe you can give them the, the if you can find the stats, la, like for a five minutes video, you know, the, the retention of the, the attention from the, the consumers, uh, the viewers uh, when they watch. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it like, is it going to stay for long or what, what is the length of time are they going to stay, stay with the video? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I know like, sometimes uh, the more the better, well, I want a 10 minute video, but yeah. your real estate, what are the things that you want to tell that is so long? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've encountered these kind of like Correct. questions before. Like, people say, I want to show everything. Then I, like my rejection question is that, show everything, then what's the point they come in here? Because they, they feel like, okay, I show everything. Once they come, they sign papers on me. For, for me, like, like sales process doesn't work that way. Like. For me, they need to like, either they get, need to get attracted, need to come to their place, feel the place. If they like it, money-wise, affordable for them, sign the papers. So that's, mm. that's the strategy I have la, for if I'm say, talking to a developer. Mm. So yeah, I mean, I can try this. Why, why if let's say, work with their budget. You're saying that working with their budget. Correct, correct. And then when you work with their budget and then you, you 
find out what are the things that that you'll be doing uh, so so that you are still stay within your own budget mm. and, I see. And, and not over over let's over say, uh, let's say for example two thousand ringgit of course are you going to hire another assistant or just yourself yep you know and then you have to uh, minus some of the expenses like transport and all that so yeah i think uh, I, think, I think transportation and petrol petrol yeah and that will be the highest and then and how much the time now. spent i'm going to shoot is this just one full day i can shoot everything mm -hmm. Few hours or two days. Uh, two okay. days or the other day you're mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so you say two thousand. I must shoot only everything in one day. Oh yeah, usually it's one day like Because uh, because remember the uh, last uh, time we shot the drone right. footage. That was like uh, early morning, nine or ten o'clock. We shot it like half an hour, then ciao yeah. ready. So that was the, yeah. I mean, I'm getting like that was like a two day shoot because before you shot the drone, mm. I actually shot everything the day before that. Correct. And so shooting is one thing lah, and then is there any other preps or not? And then lighting in more for not. Yeah. You know, all this all these are time, you know. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, so you, let's say you take two hours to, to prep everything, then wow, then you will shoot. So you're you're spending a lot of time yeah. already. I mean this uh I mean yeah. those who are listening, right? We are, I know we are talking about videography, like, but this also applies to photography as well. Yeah. Like And then you haven't thought in a post production, eh? Yeah, I mean do, <laughs> like most people who like cinematographers, uh DPs, editors, right? The most work is done during the editing time, right? Because Correct. I feel like Shooting is just thirty percent of the work. Mm. The remaining seventy is the editing one. Yes, correct. If and let's say your editing sucks, uh, then the whole video. I mean, sucks let's say it's a simple video lah. Right? Then there's, there's no la. <laughs> no uh, flowery transition or whatever. Yeah, I mean for let's say sound but designing. Just the music alone. Do you, do you, you need to let the client know, like how how much time that you need to search a specific yeah. music. <laughs> like. Yeah. Uh, currently right now I'm using epidemics, right? Yeah. Uh, for a certain project, I have I, I actually categorize each music in my, I download like about 300 music already. I have a special hard drive just for music. Yeah. I categorize them by two things. One is the beats, like you know the RPM beats, yeah. how big like how fast is the beats. Mm -hmm. Second one is the how's the tone. Mm -hmm. Is it like moody, slow, moody oh. high? Like there's a lot of like different different tones you need to go through for each specific at least lah. So, so music like based on your experience as well so <clears throat> so the best thing is choose a few music and let the client choose lah before you start your work wow <laughs> you don't do that no i usually okay this is my workflow lah we shoot the first day yeah. or second two days Correct. depending lah and then uh, after three days i will start doing the editing because during the time i need to do my works as well Correct. like get Correct. new clients so the third day is the editing day i would say so within for me, the edit won't take that long, lah. Like maximum, with no disturbance, mm -hmm. after two hours. Okay. Only the problem comes is subtitles. No lah, but about background music. For me, background music, I have a categories one. Like I like no, I told you, like. What, what if clients say I don't like this? Yeah, music. so that's the thing, lah. So that's my process. The third day, right? I finish the first draft with the subtitles because sometimes, um, I I do face these people like, let's say like you know we have Malaysian accent, right? Yeah. In the subtitle, we don't want to use the accent. Some people prefer it, some people don't prefer it. So the subtitles, I need to show them that the first draft ready. First draft sent, and then it's up to them when they want to reply me. Usually they reply me at like one day, like well, one day. Let's say for example, uh, you also edit the video, uh, also record, sing with the music, man, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what if they don't like the music? So I'll change, though. But so you, you also change the, the editing? The whole, like, yeah. Because I, I give them two options. But when you edit, do you follow the music? Uh, only when B-rolls. During B-rolls only. Yeah. So for me, how I label everything, right? It's very... Are you using one song or certain oh, clips? I, I use one main song. There's a, there's a settings. Even though the song is like half a second or one minute, right? Premiere Pro has this new set. I, I don't know it's called new or very old settings, right? It can actually extend like let's say a one minute song into five minutes or eight minutes it, it does its own magic la. i don't know how it does it i, I, know, I know yeah so I, I use that one bass song and then use like small small sound effects yeah la. so let's say if the client say i don't like the background music then i change la. because it, for me when i change right the most hardest part for me to change is subtitles only that's for what me about la. the flow the flow they are they will always like them. okay usually the flow we have i will tell them earlier on so first we're going to introduce this no, I mean the, the, the mood because the yeah, yeah. Is they they will know one before I edit right. They yeah. will know what's the process. 
how is the sequence going to be like oh i'm going to show the property on this stage oh i'm talking about the song the music yeah it, but but does it change the, the oh a little bit a little bit i just need to tweak a little bit only but yeah. for me not so much lah. the music change for me right either they want change right i'll ask them what kind of music you're looking for or got any example or not because sometimes my clients they don't like certain music like very happy happy song they want to have like more like i don't know is it classified as a drum beat song have you heard of that songs before now i work differently okay right. so how, how do you work I will, when you i will after shooting right. in my head i already know like how is the flow ready i will i will send some of my the, the music that I, that I chose. Oh, okay. Then I tell them, these are the music, choose one, and then I'll start editing. Oh. Otherwise, it will, it will conflict with, with my flow. Because, oh. because some music, you have beat one. Yeah, yeah. And then you follow the beat. And then some beats are different. You know, the, the mood. Wow. So okay. when you change the music, your editing also change, man. Okay. Right. So that means like, before you even start any project, you will send the music first to your clients. I try to, yeah. Otherwise, when you first start there, then you send the first draft, I don't like this music. Then how? Okay. Because last time, I encountered a client where I changed the music six times. Holy crap! Uh, six times, ah? Correct. Wow, okay. So, because they don't understand, man, because every music, there's a flow. Man. Yeah. Correct. Man. Okay, okay. Uh, so, let's say... But it wouldn't take longer, though, like, to confirm them to... I don't know, like, for, for my clients, they are very... Uh, not always like available to do all this post-production stuff because they need to go out, meet clients, appointment, right? Usually they reply me very late. One. Let them li listen. Uh. Make okay. them listen. Okay. Maybe oh. you choose three. Uh, uh, if they like that, at least you know this are... So good. how's your process? Do you like after the shoot only you send them? After, or the, after the shoot, shoot after you, you after meet them and show? Okay. My process is before I shoot, mm -hmm. I, of course, somehow you have that yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, ideas, like, ideas correct. I say. But when you are there, then when you look at the place, then it's a little bit different. <laughs> then, you get, then you get other ideas. Okay, like, I think it's not just me going through this problem. A lot of people doing this. Like, okay. So then you get other ideas. Then you say, ah, maybe this is better. Uh -huh. I can do slow motion with this. You know? okay. Then you add in. Mm. So once you shoot everything, you look at all the footages, then you have other prettier ideas in mind. Mm, yeah. like. Sometimes the song changes your Correct, feeling, right. like, Then yeah. you choose the song. Then let's say you 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 like certain song, like certain music, uh -huh. okay? You choose like this one, one or two that your best one. And you give him another one where you think your client may like. Mm. May like, you know? So, so give that choice. Cool. Then only you start. Otherwise, <laughs> after you finish editing, then only you present wow. your class. Very, uh, very yeah. different uh, the way we work. <laughs> this is why I, I mean, I love to hear from other people's right. workflow like, because I, I, I can do your thing probably it's more effective than what I'm doing at the moment no, because so I can like everyone has a different taste yep. you know, of yep, music yep. so some, sometimes they, they like all this very upbeat you know like the, the, the free so music you can search in yeah, YouTube yeah. <laughs> so you have no choice man. so, yeah. so you, you have that on standby yeah, like sometimes but, I wonder you know, why I'm paying that much for a music platform where I can just find YouTube no because as a creator sometimes you have your own preference, yeah. your own taste. Like, ah, this one, this is what I want to sell. Very suitable for this video. Correct. At the same time, you have a plan B or backup mm. for your client. Okay. You know? So you need to balance a bit. La. So sometimes, as a creator, we cannot just die, die, so you must take this song. Yep. <laughs> yeah, speaking of music, right? if you want to check out uh, this music platform, links will be in the description. Just yeah. sign up. Mm. Um, you'll get like, what, 15% off? And what you have? Yeah, account. yeah. <laughs> every every uh, epidemic side, every epidemic account, they have one this really? special code one. So you know, sign up down there if you guys are looking for a nice music platform. Uh, I'm do looking at two uh, different music platform called Artlist. Uh, their music is quite well, but their pricing a bit more. Expensive. Yeah, for me, it's not validating, so I didn't get that package. So like. similar, I mean, the client also need to understand we are paying for all this. For all, yeah. yeah, yeah so. <laughs> All these are costs. Yep. So, this has been a very good podcast. Uh, we've been talking about after post RMCO suddenly become a coaching session between <laughs> me and John already. <laughs> so, I mean, thank you. Thank you for uh, telling, sharing this to mm. me and whoever's watching this yeah. video as well. And yeah. Hopefully, they learned something as well. Hopefully, Hopefully you guys learned something. something. And if you, want, if you really want to implement this, right, 
Just share with us or share with John. So John, if you want to approach you, where do you want to approach you? No, you can come to my Instagram. You can DM me. And What's your Instagram and handle? John LMC underscore here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I will pop up right there. I just put a link down there in the description. What <laughs> link? Because it will pop up here like that one. That you want pop up? Do you want type or just click? Which one is easier for them? Uh, pop up and also click. Uh, yeah, uh, this guy. Uh, uh, where can okay, I I'll, I'll put all his uh, social media links down there. You have a Facebook? Uh? Uh, Facebook not so active. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Just, just curious, right? Anyone really active in Facebook or not? I'm really curious. I mean, I feel like Facebook is more like a shopping platform than a uh, social no, because, media platform. Uh, depending on your network. Network, okay. Uh, but my page is not very active because uh, not many people. Mm, yeah, yeah. So in my personal one, because I have a network of friends and businesses, okay. so so I'm you, more active on in my the personal. personal. Okay, uh, rather than page. So I I link yeah. his personal if you want to contact. Through Facebook, if that's your catch, follow me on Instagram, a better. And yeah. then you can also get his, get his subscribers come up. Also subscribe my YouTube. <laughs> you can see some of the videos, stuff that I shot. Okay. Uh, so anything else you wanna talk to, uh, tell them at, before we end? Not really. Not really. Uh, sure. Just just follow just follow our yeah. Instagram. <laughs> so guys, I hope you guys enjoy this video and hopefully you hey, follow. Wait, 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 this, wait, this on your YouTube. Uh, YouTube, yeah. Oh, okay. So hopefully you follow whatever John just. Uh, taught, taught us in this video because this become like a more coaching session about pricing uh, how to talk to clients and how to work with their own budget so yeah guys hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, go out there discover connect and inspire and I'll see you guys in the next video